Right, how did I get to know all of that information? I do get asked this question quite a lot, so I will answer here on a video that probably most people will see. Might have to repeat this again in a few months, but where did I learn the information it's regarding DPFs, DPF cleaning, DPF repairs? I didn't get the information from anywhere. Um, I learnt this information myself by when a car comes to me, I keep seeing the same issue over and over, literally just dealing with one at the minute, waiting on a part. And what the garage's answer for this guy was is he's had a DPF clean. A couple of days later, the lights come back on. He's gone back to the garage, and what's their answer? Let's try another force region. So instead of me doing what other people are doing, let's try a force region. Oh, you've got a DPF. Let's try this. Let's let's try and do a force region. I just spend some time going over the live data. What's going on? Look at this one. Okay, DPF pressure is this much on that one. I noticed on the last one after I cleaned the DPF, the DPF pressure was a lot lower than that. So from that, my experience, the DPF pressure is high on this car. Uh, and that's how I learned that, learned about DPF pressure. How did I learn about the rest of the stuff? For instance, okay, this guy's got an air correlation code as well as a DPF. Now, I can't remember, but it's probably likely that I, when I first started out, I probably cleaned someone's DPF and learned the hard way that Within a few days or a couple hundred miles, the DPF's blocked again, the customer comes back to me. And instead of me saying, okay, let's try and do another force region. Instead of me doing that, I ask myself, why? Why has this DPF blocked after I cleaned it, and I know it was clean, why is it now blocked again? Okay, so we've got some more faults here. Look on the diagnostic, we've got some more faults. Okay, we've got an air correlation code. Perhaps that's causing an issue. So... I'll find where that air correlation code is and fix that. Then his DPF might be okay. And turns out, yeah, it did. It was okay. Same with the wing mirror jobs i done. I learned that the hard way because I cleaned someone's DPF, uh, filled the PAT fluid tank, and then I was really surprised to see that, the, that it came back with a, a blocked DPF a few days later, and I was like, what? At that point, I considered myself to know what I was doing, and I and I was really shocked that this car came back to me. So, instead of me saying, okay, let's try cleaning again, I had to take further steps and look, okay, what have I missed? I've missed something. I'm looking around. There's no fault in the ECU apart from a blocked DPF. I look in the body control module. There's a fault there for the ambient temperature sensor. And then I look, okay, there's a fault for the ambient temperature sensor. I look on the speedo or on the display screen. The ambient temperature sensor is not reading. It's blank. Okay, so it's possible that could be a related cause. Maybe because that's not working, the DPF needs the, the temperature. The fuel injectors will need the, the ambient temperature to adjust the fuel ratio. All right, I'm going to replace that. Where is it? It's on the wing mirror, so we need to replace the wing mirror. Okay, we'll replace the wing mirror, put that on. And I'm not just saying to the customer, okay, goodbye, see you later. Test drive on a car. Let the customer go home, follow up with them in a couple of days. And they said to me, look, I've had this this van at a dealership. I've had it at two garages. Each time it came out, the light was gone. But within 20 miles, the light come back on. Same happened when I first cleaned it. Um, today, I've driven 200 miles. I drove to Scotland, back from where I came from. The guy came down from Scotland or something like that. Um, came down from the Scotland area, he's drove back to Scotland, he's, he's a courier driver, he's, he's driving all around the country today, he said, look, it's done 600 miles, the van's fine. Whatever you've done is fixed it. So I changed the ambient temperature sensor in the wing mirror, and I learned from that, okay, next time I see that problem, I know how to fix it. And again, it's just related to experience. There's nobody out there telling you that... If you have a DPF problem, change the, or make sure that your ambient temperature sensor is working. Make sure that the thermostat is reaching 80, 85 degrees-ish, 90 degrees operating temperature. Make sure that your glow plugs are working. You, you, might, you get a few people now saying that. But as far as I was concerned, when I needed this information, it wasn't anywhere to be found. I could not find this information anywhere. There was a couple of DPF specialist companies who were saying that they found 
problems with this vehicle that no other garage could find but they wouldn't tell you what what the problem was or how they fixed it so as far as i'm concerned there is no information anywhere about it so i had to learn the hard way myself and rather than everyone learning the hard way i thought why not use this for myself and also help people i'll share the information i'll put it out there people will learn from what i found and now they can go the easy route because they think okay this guy's put a video up saying that this was the problem with his let's check ours okay yeah we've got the same issue our ambient temperature sensor not working or we've also got an air correlation code on our car let's fix that now i've just had this guy come out to me with a with a, with a transit connect uh and it's got an air correlation code and it had two force regions now it went back again and what's the answer? Let's do another force region. If that don't work, we'll do a, a remap to delete the DPS software. None of those, none of those fixes would would have worked because it's got an error correlation code. So how, why would you remap a car that's got an error correlation code? It's losing boost from a split pipe. So remapping is probably going to make that even worse. Um. So basically, yeah, that's it. I've learned myself through experience i've learned the hard way on a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff i didn't need to learn the hard way it was just common sense i look at stuff okay you've got a dpf blocked and the only other fault code you've got here is the glow plug so let's change your glow plugs then clean your dpf job sorted or we've got a blocked dpf i look on live data rev the car up the differential pressure is not moving okay that sensor is obviously not working or the pipe that goes to the sensor is split so let's have a look in that area uh, yeah, that's it. General experience. Uh, for me, of course, as well, I get to get a lot of experience on this because I'm doing minimum four per day. I'm doing four DPFs per day and I've been doing that for years. So I'm going to see a lot of these issues and I'm going to see a lot of repeat issues. So, and to, to put it that way as well, is some garages have probably never seen a DPF fault before. They're in there, they're doing cam belt changes all day and clutches, and then they get a DPF in and they like, mm, don't know what to do with this one. So it is fair enough in that in that perspective. It is easy for me to say, uh, I know what I'm doing and I've seen this problem before because I'm doing four a day. So I'm gonna see these problems regularly and I'm gonna remember them. I don't, someone asked me before, you must have all of these faults obviously written down in your little black book. I don't have a book. It's all in my brain and I've just gotta remember what each fault is with each car and how it works. Sometimes I can forget. Um, so, a bit of a rant video, but I suppose that is a lot of information that a lot of people wanted to know. I've been asked this question a lot of times in the past, and that's your answer for it. See you later.